alaikum welcome to my online class you know the spread of the virus has become a grave concern across the globe but we need not to be disheartened rather what is of most importance is to have patience you know nothing lasts forever hope all of you are staying at home and safe this class is for the students of 11 and 12 and our today's topic is phrases and clauses these are very important items in your syllabus five marks is allotted for this item and very often you see that you make mistakes identifying clauses or phrases so if you carefully observe the class I hope it will help you to understand what is clauses and phrases okay now let us see a phrase is a group of words having no subject and no finite verb. Let us see. What is phrase? Phrase is a group of words. It's very important. A group of words having no subject and no finite verb. And what is close? What is close? A part of a sentence. It is a part of a sentence. Having a subject and a finite verb. You see? Close is a, is a part of a sentence having a subject and a finite verb. You need to know what is finite verb. Let us see. Finite verb. Changed according to tense number and person. Remember, a finite verb, a finite verb is changed according to tense, number and person. Okay? A finite verb changed is changed according to tense, number and person. Now let us see some examples. Mazhar eats rice. They eat rice. I act rice. See, there are three sentences here. One is Mazhar eats rice. Another is they eat rice. Okay? See, these two sentences are the examples of present indefinite tense. Here, mazhar is a third person singular number. That's why we add S here. S here. Okay? It is third person plural. So, we do not use any uh, S or ES. Okay? So, this verb changes according to subject. You know? According to number. It's third person singular. It's that person plural, okay? Uh, I can also say, I eat rice. So, you see, there is no S here. So, it is it is that person singular, that person plural. So, verb changes, okay? It is first person. It is first person, so verb do not take any S or ES, okay? And you see, according to tense, this verb changes. I eat rice. It is an example of past indefinite tense, okay? So, we can say the verb which is changed according to number, person, and tense. This is called finite verb. Now, let us see what is non-finite verb. To live. To live 
to live. See, here we 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 just use to live, to live, and to live. See there, the verb which do not change or which is not changed according to number, person, and tense. This is called non-finite verb. So this is an opposite of finite verb. Finite verb changes according to sub, according to number, person, and tense. But non-finite verb do not change. Okay. So a clause must have a finite verb and a subject. But a phrase is just a group of words having no subject and no finite verb. Now let us see some examples of clauses. I know the place. You see, this is an example. Uh, I know the place. You know, uh, I have to mention that clauses are different types, uh, like principal clause, subordinate clause. Very often, uh, in completing sentence, you have to make principal clause or subordinate clause. You, you need to know what is principal clause and what is subordinate clause. Okay? I know the place. You see, this is, uh, this is a part of a sentence. This is complete. But if we want to elaborate this sentence, then we can make a clause. Like, I know the place where he was born. See. Here, we, we see two clauses, two clauses. One is principal clause, another is subordinate clause, you know. We here use where, a, you know, a relative, a relative pronoun. We have used here a relative pronoun to connect these two clauses, two clauses, okay? So, you see, you see, here, uh, here we see that, uh, you know, uh, this is a clause and this is another clause. You know, the clause which doesn't depend on other clause for its meaning, this is called principal clause. So this is an example of principal clause. And the clause which depends on other clause for its meaning, this is called subordinate clause. This is an example of subordinate clause. You see... If I, if I want to say, I know the place, you can conclude the sentence here. I know the place, okay? But when you say, where he was born, where he was born, if you want to say where he was born, it, is, it doesn't, you know, express full meaning. It depends on other clues for his meaning, okay? So easily, for, for your better understanding, I can say, where subordinate clues Subordinate clause is always connected with conjunction or relative pronoun. Subordinate clause is always connected with relative pronoun, okay, or conjunctions. So this is a subordinate example of subordinate clause, and this is an example of principal clause, okay. Now let us uh, let us make few sentences. And let us see few rules how to make clauses, okay. First of all, I need to say so that. So that very often, it, in a, every examination, you have to uh, un, uh, answer this uh, structure, like so that plus subject plus can or could plus verb one plus extension. Suppose I can say, Rakit goes to college. Okay, so that, see, here we find the clause, like Rakib goes to college, so that, so we have to make a meaningful clause, which must be related to, to this clause, Rakib goes to college, for what purposes, there may be many purposes behind this, okay, so we can, we can, first of all we have to use a subject, so Rakib, for Rakib we can use he, Okay? He. We can use can or could. It is an example of present indefinite tense. So, we can use here, he can. Okay? And we have to use a verb in present form.
forming base form so so that he can learn we can say he can learn you can elaborate this sentence okay he can learn um, uh, you know many information like this you can elaborate this sentence so you have to know the the thing is that after so that you need a subject then can or could then the base form of verb and then extension do you understand so we have written an example of we have written this this is an example of subordinate clause okay so sometimes you may use phrases sometimes you may use you know clauses you need to know where you will use clause or where you will use phrase okay now let us see another rule Rana is too weak. See, two, two plus adjective or adverb plus two plus verb one plus extension. See, here I have written a sentence like Rana is too weak. So you see the structure two. Two plus adjective. Okay, so you need now to set two. Okay, I set here two. Then you need to set here a verb which must be suitable to this verb, this adjective. You see, Rana is too weak. So he is too weak to move, to walk, to run like this. You must need to make a meaningful word or for words to walk. Okay, so uh, so this is an example of phrase. See, in the earlier sentence, I have shown you how to make a clause, and in this sentence, I I I just show you how to use phrase or or, or uh, you know words. Okay, now let us see another thing like the question is too difficult the question is too difficult dash okay now here just observe the thing that two plus adjective or adverb plus four plus you know objective form plus two plus verb one Whenever you will say that the subject is a non-living being, when the subject is a non-living being, then you need to set for. Okay? You need to set for and you must use an objective form. Objective form, it must be, it must depend on the, you know, subject. The question is difficult for whom? For the students. Like, the question is too difficult for the students or for me or for him or for her like this you can use uh, to understand you must remember that you know wh what is the subject and what is the adjective okay adjective and then after uh, on depending on this you have to complete the sentences okay and here we use what? What do we use here? We use a group of words, a phrase. But in the first sentence, I have used a clause. Okay? Now let us see another rule. No sooner had plus subject plus verb three plus extension plus then plus subject plus verb two plus extension okay uh, no sonar had reached the station dash see this example
example, no sooner had Oppo reached the station dash. Okay? See, here we find this structure. No sooner had plus subject plus verb three plus extension the station. And now you need to set then. Okay? Just just go forward taking this structure. Then so the you know pronoun of Opu will be he. Okay? No sooner had Opu reached the station then then okay now let us we can use another subject. We need not to use the pronoun of this subject. We can use another subject. No sooner had Opu reached the station then then what happened? The train left. Listen. No sooner had a poor raised the station, then subject the train, verb to left. You can extend this sentence. Okay? So, uh, these, 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 uh, very often uh, in every examination, you have such kind of question. So, you need to solve these uh, things uh, very carefully. Okay? So, I can say, no sooner had a poor raised the station, you must um, set here then, then subject, then verb two. You can um, you can you can elaborate this sentence. Okay. Now let us see another sentence. Like it will be it will be the same structure. Same structure. Plus when, plus subject. Part two plus extension. Okay? Now let us see this thing like scarcely had. You know, no sooner had, scarcely had, or hardly had. These three phrases have the same meaning, okay? And same function and same structure. Okay, so I can say scarcely had opu had reached the station when the train left. See, here the same structure, okay? It is similar to the previous sentence, no sooner had. Just there is a difference here. We can use here when instead of then, okay? Instead of then, we must use when other things will be same and you can also use hard hardly had and hardly had you know whenever you use hardly had you can use your when you can use your before do you understand in case of no sooner had you need to use then in case of scarcely had you need to use when and in case of hardly had, you may use when or, sorry, in case of hardly had, you may you must use before. Do you understand? Okay, now let us see another sentence. It is many day, many years. Since dash, it was many years since dash. Many years have passed since. Observe these three sentences here. Uh, here I have written, you see, it is many years since. So the next structure will be subject verb 2 plus extension. These and these will be the same, it will be different. Okay? Subject had 
part three plus extension. Remember? Just see, it is many years since, you know, blank. Well, what will we use here? We have to proceed taking this structure, okay? We can, we can write, it is many years since we talked. Subject, I have used a subject, we, and then verb two, talked. We met, we discussed the matter, like this, okay? And in the next sentence, uh, why, why have I used this structure? Because it is present indefinite tense, okay? The principal clause is in present indefinite tense. So, the subordinate clause, it must be this in this structure, okay? Now, let us see another sentence. It was many years since. So, you see, you know, it is an example of past indefinite tense. That's why I have to use this structure. I have to use this structure like subject. We had talked. Do you understand? Here, as it is in present indefinite tense, I have used this structure subject verb two extension but here it is an example of past indefinite tense that's why i have used this structure like subject had verb three or past participle form of verb an extension we had talked and you know this is another example it is in present perfect tense this clause is in present perfect tense so we need to solve it like in this way, in the first format, the first rule, like we talked. So to sum up, I can say that when, since, when you find since, if the previous clause, previous clause, the principal clause is in present indefinite or present perfect, you need to complete the sentence using this structure. Subject, verb 2, and extension. But when you find uh, the principal clause is in past tense, then you need to complete this sentence in this way, like subject, had, verb 3, extension. It will be past perfect tense. Okay? Now, let us see another example, another rule. Charmin talked as if subject had verb three extension. Okay, let us see. Uh, in this sentence, uh, you know, I have used, you know, as if or as though. Like the previous structure, it will be, uh, it will be like this. Shamin talks as if, as if, then subject, then verb to, then extension. As if she knew it. I can use subject, verb to, extension, object. Shamin talk. It is in present indefinite tense. That's why I I have used here in this way, this structure. But in this sentence, you know, in this part, it is in past indefinite tense. So I have to follow this structure. As if she had known it. So uh, in this case, I have made clothes. Sometimes you may make phrase, you know, phrase I have told you earlier, a group of words having no subject, no finite verb, finite verb. But 
In case of clause, you need to set a subject and a finite verb. So, in most of the cases, uh, I have used clauses. Okay? So, yes. uh, we'll stop here today. Uh, in the next class, I will try to show you a few more rules. Okay? Until then, stay safe and strong. Thank you very much.